Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Boise native Elin Jewell. So good to be here. Thanks so much um, for having us here. It's a real honor. And I'm just going to play a few songs for you just to warm up the stage a little. Um, we're going to start off with a song from my new album, brand new album, just came out last month. It's called Gypsy, and this song is called Witness. <laughs> See that sunset out the window, it's there for the taking. Throw back your blinds, open all your doors, feel my love in your heart, it's here for the making. You have only to know it, and it's yours, it's yours. It's yours. Hear that blue jay in the garden, the little tune he's singing. He's singing it for you. If you just stop to hear, feel the love between us, the joy that it's bringing. It appears, it appears, it So this next one, this is um, a song that, that Mayor Beter asked me to play. Um, I think he likes the song, because he <laughs> asks me to play it from time to time. And I'm always flattered and honored, and so I'm, I'm just happy to, to do it again. I hope, hope I get to play this many, many more times from Mayor Beter. This is, um, this is a song called Always Coming Home. It's one I wrote about my home, and I think you can probably guess where that is. It's right here in, in Boise, and um, it's, uh, yeah, this place means a lot to me, so um, it's just a pleasure. Here's always coming home.
Slept on the back of the old mule While the thunder cracked and the wind blew I had no doubt we'd make it through Cause we were always coming home Just ten miles as the crow flies The cold highway had me paralyzed But the station wagon had it memorized It was always coming home Washed by the water of the hometown Well, I'm always coming home To that little place Green and still Between the desert Hollowed hills Where my love waits And always will I'll be coming home Give it up for Dave Mannion on guitar, and my husband Jason Beak on the drums. Thank you, guys. They are local heroes of the music scene, and um, nice enough to play with me today. But they're leaving me alone for this one, all by my lonesome. I'm going to um, close with this tune. This is one that I just recently wrote, and um, I like to close on this note because it's really, it's where I'm at these days, and I think that this is a message that a lot of us could use, um, no matter which, um, what kind of experience you're having in your life right now, or which side of the political aisle you sit on, or anything, I, th I think that this is um, a message that, um, well, it helps me anyway, so maybe it helps you too. This is called Fear. On the journey, many thieves, along the road, many ghosts. Don't linger at the wayside, you were made to pass them by. Don't take fear, don't take fear, don't take fear to be your guide. Just look him in the eye and thank him kindly for his time. 
say I really must be going there's something I need to find there's no rival keep in mind we're surrounded on all sides cause everyone is selling the easy life buy this potion and your skin your skin will shine Take this pill and you'll feel just fine, just fine. Complacency, the enemy, is an empty lie. But look him in the eye and thank him kindly for his time. Say, I really must be going. There's something I need to find. Life's a dream, life's a nightmare. Life is hideous, life is fair. Love the beauty, love the struggle. Love the triumph, love the trouble. Don't take fear, don't take fear. Don't take fear, don't take fear. Don't take fear, don't take fear. Don't take fear, don't take fear, don't take fear to be your guide. Don't take fear to be your guide. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the CEO of Block 22 Management Group and 2019 Chairman of the Boise Metro Chamber Board, John Cunningham. Good afternoon. How about one more round of applause for Elon Jewell? We just might have to book her at CenturyLink Arena someday. Thank you and welcome to the 2019 Mayor's State of the City Address and Celebration. We're excited to hear the Mayor's comments today and hope you can all join us at the Basque Center immediately following the Mayor's comments here today. We'd also like to welcome those of you who are joining us online. This year's Mayor's State of the City Address is being presented by Payne West Insurance and Idaho Central Credit Union. We'd also like to thank our audiovisual sponsor this year, Production Services International, or PSI. Our sponsors for this year's State of the City Address are Gardner Company, Blue Cross of Idaho, 
St. Alphonsus, Southwest Airlines, Albertsons, University of Idaho, Boise, ESI Construction, and Micron Technology. Our corporate sponsors can be found listed on the inside of your program. Please join me in thanking all of our sponsors. I'd now like to recognize and thank members of the City Council for their hard work and dedication to the City of Boise. We greatly appreciate your ongoing commitment to making Boise the most livable city in the country. Would members of the City Council please stand so that we can thank you? The Chamber greatly appreci appreciates the working relationship we have with the City. I'd now like to go over a couple of logistical items before the Mayor's address. First of all, with the purchase of your ticket to the Egyptian today, you are also afforded admission to the after-party celebration over at the Basque Center immediately following, where there will be complimentary hors d'oeuvres, drinks, and live music from Red Light Challenge. And lastly, we're going to take you back a few years to your elementary school days, and we're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please welcome Zana Taylor, Molly Blades, and Kyra Cobb to the stage. Zana, Molly, and Kyra demonstrate daily what it means to be Boise kind. All three attend Garfield Elementary and serve as ambassadors for the Boise School District. And all three plan to continue the Boise Kind Initiative at Garfield this year through everyday leadership and in the community. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mayor Dave Beter. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be in the Egyptian. You know, everything's better at the Egyptian. Uh, even me, uh, at, <laughs> at least I hope. Uh, you know, a few months ago, uh, I had the pleasure of giving a speech uh, at the Downtown Rotary Club. And after I was finished, as is uh, the norm, we opened it up for questions and answers. And hands uh, went up, and I called on a gentleman. And he said, you know, Mayor, this is really a comment, not a question. He said, uh, but when I die, if I'm lucky enough uh, to have the chance to go to heaven and the good Lord meet, meets me at the gate, and he says to me, would you rather go to heaven, or would you rather go back to Boise? <laughs> and he said, I swear to God, Mayor, I choose to go back to Boise. That's how much I love this city. It's a true story. I have 60 or 70 witnesses that will confirm it. You know, it reminds me of something my mom might have said. Uh, she was born and raised here in Boise. My father was from Minnesota. They met and married here. And uh, after they married, there must have been at least some doubt of where them, they might live. And my father said to my mother, he said, uh, Eloise, where would you like to live? And he said that she said, you know, Pat, we can live anywhere you want to live as long as we can see the Boise River from there. You know, uh, these kinds of stories tell us how much we love 
our city and how vital it is that we keep it that way. You know, it's been my honor to be the mayor and we've had some real success. 15 new parks, four new neighborhood libraries, three recreation centers where we only had one. We preserved 11,000 acres of open space. We have a community detox and crisis mental health center that's free, Allenbaugh House. You know, we've worked with our school district to do one of the first pre-K programs in the state of Idaho. We are a safe city, one of the safest cities in the country. Uh, just this last year, we've gotten, we've lowered crime 17% from where it was, 17% uh, lower, a full 45% lower since when I took office. We have uh, rebuilt fire stations, we've built new fire stations, and we've built a fire training facility that's the, one of the best around. And we are a greener city with expanded curbside recycling and composting, an expanded geothermal system that's been rated one of the top 10 systems in the world. Uh, you know, we have the uh, Dixie Drain Project that makes the Boise River cleaner, and it does so uh, with a lower carbon footprint, and it's cheaper. And we've committed to have our city operations 100% renewable energy by 2030 and the city as a whole by 2035. You know, we've brought something to every neighborhood in the city, whether it's a park or picnic facilities or a bike path. It's been so important that it go to all around the city and we work with neighborhood associations to make sure that their priorities are indeed the priorities of the city. <coughs> you know, being the mayor is about the future. Nothing excites me more than the next project, the next idea, the next way that we can make this city even better. Because I think all of us know deep down that what we have here is precious. It's also fragile. We need to make sure that the best of what we have here goes on to the next generation. You know, four generations of my family have called the city of Boise home. But, the most, but uh, the most important generation, a member of that generation is about to turn 14 next week. And you know that needs to be our focus. That's why we do the work that we do for my daughter, for your sons and daughter, for those that come after us. Because that's why this work is just so important. Great job. You know, today I want to talk about the challenges uh, that we face. Some of the challenges that we have are indeed due to the success that we have. And other challenges have their origin outside the city. Uh, but you know, we'll have success with the same work and the same spirit that led us to this place right now. But first, and I know John already do this, did this, but I want to do it again. Uh, let's give it up for Elin Jewell. Isn't she terrific? And one more time for the Boise City Council every Tuesday night doing great work. You know, my Rotarian friend, my mom, and all of us, I think we, we really know that there's something special going on here. But you know, there are four characteristics, I think, that have really led to our success and are gonna lead to our success in the future. And I wanna talk about those four. Uh, the first is safety, always our highest priority. Next, we're an active city, and we need to keep that way. We are a creative city. And finally, and maybe most importantly, uh, we are a kind city. You know, first of all, I want to talk about safety. As I said, it was, I was so happy to join Chief Bill Bones uh, in conveying to the community that crime went down 17% in this last year alone to the lowest point in decades. In fact, the lowest point since we started doing these statistical analysis with the FBI. 
Uh, that's the result of community policing. And that's the result of our citizens all being actively engaged in crime prevention. But it isn't only in Boise that we're having success, we're having success across the valley. The Treasure Valley Partnership, back uh, at least a, a decade ago, uh, we banded together, especially the mayor uh, of Nampa and Caldwell, the mayors of Nampa and Caldwell, and we said, how can we push back against gang crime in our valley because it doesn't know jurisdictional boundaries? And we got together through the partnership and we funded a special United States attorney to prosecute gang crimes. And we haven't just lowered gang crimes, which we've done, but we've kept, kept gangs from even forming because we were able to disrupt them before they even got going. Uh, let's uh, join me in thanking, with a round of applause, all the members of the uh, Treasure Valley Partnership, mayors and county commissioners all across the valley for this success. That's the kind of effort we're going to need uh, to push hard against opioid addiction. So what have we done? We've got together again through the Treasure Valley Partnership and engaged law enforcement and healthcare and nonprofits and cities and counties to make sure that do, we can do all we can. Uh, first of all, uh, people with an opioid problem are best served not in the criminal justice system, but in treatment. That's what our emphasis has been, to work with the healthcare community, uh, not to over-prescribe opioids. It's so important that we engage that part of it and hold pharmaceutical companies responsible. That's why the city of Boise joined a lawsuit against them. All of these activities are gonna help us beat back the scourge of opioids. It's been a problem in so many cities. We're going to counter it here so that it doesn't that get that kind of traction, not in Boise and not in the whole valley. <clears throat> you know, but no individual has been more important uh, to our success in lowering crime than Chief Bill Bones. You might have heard in the last few days that Chief Bones has decided to retire. Well, he came to me over a year ago and he told me, you know, Mayor, when you hired me, I told you I'd commit to four years. We're coming up on that time. I'm going to retire in the next few months. And I said, Bill, you can't do that. You've got to stay longer. And boy, am I glad that I did. Uh, because his retirement now is a little like a quarterback winning the Super Bowl and deciding to retire right after the game. Crime statistics are so low, he's going out on top. It's my honor to present the highest award that we have in the city of Boise, the key to the city, to Chief Bill Bones. Bill, come on out. Oh my, I'm glad it worked out on this. I'm glad it worked out on this. Yes, you know. I'm just glad he's never wanted to run for mayor. <laughs> you know, on top of this, uh, on top of that, uh, our former chief, Chief Mike Masterson, while we're going out and searching for a new chief, he's agreed to be our interim chief. And Mike Masterson knows a thing or two about lowering crime. Please recognize and thank Mike Masterson for stepping up to be interim chief. <laughs> right over there. You know, when we're an active city, and over the last several months, the city of Boise has uh, pushed to give, give even more amenities uh, to our citizens so they can get outside and enjoy our surroundings. Uh, and the best of these are the second phase of our Whitewater Park. You know, uh, thanks to the generosity of the Albertsons Family Foundation, 
uh, together was Esther Simplot Park. I don't think there's really anything like it in the country. It's like we dropped a beach down into the middle of Boise. And the greatest thing about it is families can go there and enjoy all these different activities, and it doesn't cost them a dime. Our Gorongosa, our zoo is expanded by two and a half acres. The Gorongosa State Park exhibit, it's been so successful, 56,000 people visited the zoo uh, in July alone. Uh, and a third uh, great amenity is the Together Tre Treasure Valley Dog Island Dog Park. Uh, it's twice, it's two or three times, dog lovers, they're all around. It's two or three times the size of a regular dog park. Uh, it's been wildly successful. And in addition to that, it keeps the geese down, at least a little bit. <laughs> but you know, uh, we've reached an important milestone. Uh, this year, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of the Greenbelt. There is no better ex example of all of us pulling together over decades uh, to make something truly special happen, not just in the, in the city of Boise, but across the valley. Uh, you'll have a chance to celebrate with us. You can come back here tomorrow for a retrospective on the Greenbelt, but there are events all the, through the rest of the week, and you know, uh, come out and celebrate. Don't let this go by without noting it. Uh, there's all kinds of different activities. Take a minute and do that with us. This is so important. It's such a great example of how we come together. And it's the kind of activity that we're going to need in the future. I'm going to talk about that a little more in a minute. Uh, you know what we need? Uh, we're a creative city because we have to be, especially in transportation. Many of you know this, but the state of Idaho doesn't have a dedicated source of public transit funding because the legislature won't uh, give it to us, despite increased cries from our citizens to give us that authority. And we don't have control over our local roads. And, uh, you know, but we're going to move towards our future uh, to, do a, to do things a better way. Uh, for, for years, uh, the primary source of funding for, for Valley Regional Transit has been the city of Boise. Uh, last year, $7 million from our general fund, and that's a general fund that has to fund parks and police and fire and libraries, and all the things that we do. But we're going to do better than that. Uh, we've dedicated another million dollars over the next uh, two years total so that we can give better service on priority routes. It's just so important. But beyond that, we need to do what we can in the areas that we really do control, and that's our own behavior. That's why we launched Keep Boise Moving. Keep Boise Moving is an effort to bring options, to bring possibilities to you, to that we understand that relying nearly exclusively on single occupancy vehicles is not the way we're gonna go in the future. We need biking and walking uh, and carpooling and transit and even scooters when the time uh, <laughs> arrives. Even if it's just one trip a day, what that would mean added up across the city. You know, 81% of our trips are in single occupancy vehicles. What if we could lower that 10%? That's our goal, 10% over the next 10 years. We can control our behavior and we can change that. Take a bike, walk, take a scooter, carpool, take transit, and when you do a little bit, it opens the door to do more. That's an achievable goal, but one that's gonna mean so much to us. People talk about traffic getting worse. If we lower our reliance on single occupancy vehicles by 10%, uh, we can make a real dent in that, and we need to now. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, creativity is maybe more important in the biggest challenge, really an existential challenge that we all face on the issue of climate change. No single issue. It's the most 
It's the single issue that's defining of our generation. It'll determine uh, the kind of city that we leave and the kind of planet we leave to the next generation. And Boise has a chance to set an example. Unfortunately, our state and federal officials continue to flounder, but our citizens want real change. Uh, and it's going to take a, a good deal of creativity, uh, but Boise's up to that challenge. Because it's not anything that's new to us. I changed the mayor's, uh, I signed the, uh, the mayor's climate change agreement in 2006. We put a group together and began working on ideas that could make a real difference. And we, we made the goals that we set out as a city government that we set out uh, in the mayor's climate change agreement. We re-upped in 2014. We were the first city uh, in the state of Idaho to do that. And we built the first net zero building in the state of Idaho. We continue to electrify uh, our city fleet. And I'm so happy to say in 2020, we are going to have six new grant funded electric trash trucks serving the city of Boise. If we can do electrics in buses and uh, solid waste trucks and our own cars and city fleets, uh, we can make a real difference in this. Uh, but you know, uh, and, and as I've said, uh, in, we have committed to the city government being 100% a renewable energy by 2030 and the city as a whole by 2035. You know, uh, city council meetings are not known to be particularly joyous events. Uh, if you've had a chance to go to one, you probably know that that's true. But we, we committed to the goal of 100% clean energy by 2035, we got a standing ovation. You know, our citizens are ready to do this and we need to lead. And here's how we do more. Any great team effort needs a good playbook. And that's why I'm so excited to announce today Boise Climate Now. Boise Climate Now is a program uh, that'll talk about past successes, uh, but more impor importantly, engage our individual citizens and businesses to see how do we do better right here, right now in Boise. It'll be a beacon of leadership on this issue, and it'll be a way that we uh, know that we're doing all, I, all we can to set up the future to succeed. On top of that, many of you know about the Boise watershed, where our dedicated educators, uh, they enlighten something like 20,000 people a year on how important it is to manage water. But I'm proposing that we repurpose the Boise watershed uh, to address climate change as well, uh, that we repurpose and rename it the Boise Climate and Water Science Center. It really is uh, an important uh, change in the program, uh, an important change uh, where those tens of thousands of people will not just find out about water. Water and climate change are intertwined, but they'll understand what we can do in Boise uh, to really make something happen. And those, of those tens of thousands of people, the, the majority of them are students. Uh, and it'll be a tangible recognition, a physical recognition of how we need to do better uh, for the next generation. I'm excited to bring it about. As far as we know, it'll be the first center of its kind like this uh, uh, in the country. Boise's never shied away from leading on this issue, and we're up to this now. One other thing uh, in this same area, you know, uh, it's the old adage, you reduce, you reuse, and you and re recycle. But you know, we've focused nationally on, re on the recycling piece of that, maybe to the exclusion of reducing and reusing. So we went out to our citizens and asked, will you take, accept a challenge to reduce plastics in your life in some form? And we were blown away by the response. A thousand people agreed to take the challenge. 3,000 people answered our survey to talk about how we can do better. Uh, in September and October, we're gonna reach out to the business community. And how do you reduce the waste that you use? How can we do a better job in businesses? 
we're going to reach out to the broader community and tag those businesses, ask them to tag those businesses that are doing well. Uh, and on top of that, uh, you want to be the business that leads out on this issue. We'll be contacting you. So please help us out. You know, a creative city also thinks about new ways to expand our economy and also to diversify it. And there's some really good news in this area. Our focus has been to bring new economy and light industrial jobs to South Boise. Uh, we were able to form uh, uh, the East Boise Gateway Center to give us more tools uh, to bring good paying industrial jobs uh, to our town in a, uh, in a great area uh, where they fit. Uh, and I'm so happy to announce today that we're really having some success along those lines. An eco-friendly e-commerce company uh, called Verde Fulfillment has been just crushing things in Boise. They've been growing by leaps and bounds to the point that uh, they're ready to expand into a new facility, 168,000 square feet in the new Gateway East uh, Park. Uh, it's the first of, of, of many. At full build out, that'll be a million square feet uh, of industrial space and hundreds of jobs. Jobs that pay uh, the kind of wage that supports a family. It's so important to the future of Boise and we're happy to be able for Verde to lead the way and to have many more uh, coming after it. We've had some real success in that same area. One of the happiest times of this last year. Uh, you know, uh, DNL, uh, a great company that does uh, that does freight logistics. They're bringing their facility to Boise, and they not just are coming to Boise, but it took eight months of hard work and goodwill. But we were able to come up with a land exchange that both brings them to Boise and preserves. Uh, a great Boise neighborhood in Blue Valley. Like I said, it took an awful lot of work, but we're so glad that we got it to the finish line to not just bring them here, uh, but to preserve a great neighborhood. Uh, I wanna thank uh, the company, uh, CCDC. I wanna thank all those in the city that had a hand in it into the Blue Valley neighborhood. Please give it up and recognize all those folks <laughs> that led to that success. But you know we're having success all over town. One of the important pieces of economic development is venture capital. I'm so glad uh, that we were able to attract a new venture capital company with $50 million of venture capital uh, to bring to Boise startups and those beyond. And I have forgotten their name. Give it to me now. Stage.O, sorry folks, I know there's some folks from here. Give it up for Stage.O and $50 million. <laughs> and one other uh, important uh, good news, bit of good news. Uh, another company, Ravenswood Solutions. They're an in instrumentation company and they've moved their operations from California to Boise. Uh, and serve one of their main clients, which just happens to be the Army National Guard at Gowan Field. Together, these companies are, uh, represent more than 100 jobs, good paying jobs, and several hundred more on the way. We will never take our eye off the ball. Livability means prosperity, and jobs make families thrive. We'll always keep our eye. Boise's Job uh, creation is two and a half times the national average. We're always gonna focus on that. Like I said, prosperity and livability go together. <clears throat> but you know, there's maybe no area where we need more creativity, creativity than the issue of home. Everyone deserves a home. That's so basic, but it, it, it's so important to state that. That's our civic duty. That's our city commitment. Wouldn't it be nice to know that everyone would go to bed tonight in Boise with a safe and secure uh, place to stay? 
That uh, has to be our commitment, whether a teacher or a daycare worker or somebody experiencing homelessness. There's just nothing more fundamental than a home. That's why over the last 18 months, a group that we call Our Path Home, it's made up of dozens of groups uh, working to end homelessness. But we focused on chronic homelessness. Those have been homeless for more than a year. And we took a bold leap forward uh, and we have a, a, a great uh, result that I wanna talk about today and that's the New Path Community Development. A uh, New Path is where 45 people who have been chronically homeless uh, get a safe place to stay in the kind of intense services that'll help them go, uh, go forward. You know, seven years. Seven years is the length of time on average that those living in New Path were homeless. Think about that. Seven years, and now they have a great home uh, right in, in, in the core of Boise, and they have the services they need to move forward. Uh, but don't take my word for it. It's much better to hear from those folks uh, in this video. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Hey, Jimmy, that's me. <laughs> oh, man. It is hard enough when you're homeless already to be pushed away and try to corral into this little corner, you know. That's the great thing about New Path. And I'm most grateful for the air conditioning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's been great. <laughs> that, when I first got in, though, the heat, that, I was like, I'm not cold this winter. I am not cold this winter. I have a stable address. People don't understand. <laughs> this is important. There's a million things that you really can't do that you won't discover until it's time to do it. Housing is the first step. It is huge. If I can speak from personal experience, somebody who has experienced homelessness themselves, it is a necessity for recovery to move ahead, to have a safe environment. Home to me now means the first word that comes to mind is safety. True health and well-being for an individual or a family really begins at home. Our role in New Path is in partnership with St. Alphonsus to provide funding for medical services that are provided by Terry Riley, permanent housing with wraparound social services and healthcare services that really make a difference. If you had seen me 12 years ago, you may ignore me. You may have thought, oh, that guy made some bad choices. But I was given an opportunity. I was given a place to live. I was given support. Everybody's got a story. The only difference between a homeless person and a person that is used to living in a house is a shower and change clothes. A project like New Path lets us see and hear real faces and real stories of our neighbors so that they can experience the dignity that should be inherent to their experience in our community. It's just awesome having my own space. It, it, <laughs> It's a, it's a world of difference. I get up in the morning, I go to CW, I go to school, I come back home, and it's nice to be able to just lay on your couch, watch TV, or, I hate to say this, but sometimes I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> so I can still do my homework until two in the morning. It's such a relief to have that door with a lock on it and know that I'm safe. They did it really quickly, but all the partners, St. Now, St. Luke's, City, County, State, Housing Authority, Terry Riley, all those groups uh, pitched in to make that happen. And that success have new, of New Path has led us to break ground on a second development uh, for veterans experiencing homelessness. 26 veterans will have a home in Valor Point based on this same model. Uh, not only will they have a, a safe place to stay, stay, but through the VA, they'll get the kind of services that will help move them forward. We owe our veterans so much, but fundamentally, we owe them at home, and we're gonna make a big dent in doing that. But you know, uh, almost like always, we gotta do more. Uh, 
later on today, a child will wait in line to get into a shelter. Tomorrow morning, she and her mother will wake up and go out uh, and try to find gainful employment and a sense of belonging. What we need to do now is turn to those children and families and make sure that they have a home. You know, there are 166 families that uh, need a home in our community. And while one is too many, isn't 166 a number uh, that we can address? Isn't that a doable thing? We want to turn our attention, along with Ada County, who's agreed to pitch in and do it, and all the 30 partners of our path home, turn now to focus on family homelessness. 166 mothers and fathers and children, can't we find them at home? Can't we be the first city in America uh, to work to end family homelessness? People say, be careful of saying end it, and I understand that. We can't snap our fingers and end family homelessness, but we can work towards a goal of eliminating it, and that ought to be what we all do, a home. It's so basic, uh, but it, it's what we need to do. You know, it costs $6,000 to end homelessness for a family, $6,000. $6,000 is the difference between a child sleeping in a shelter or having their own bed at night and the kind of supportive services that are gonna help that family get out of homelessness. We know statistically 90% of those 166 families are homeless for the first time. They are not chronically homeless. Can't we do this? Can't we bound together? I'm enlisting all of you, all the people on our path home. Uh, we're gonna start next week. That's gonna be our focus. Uh, I really believe uh, Boise has given all of us a home. Can't we find a way to find a home for those 166 families? I know that we can. Let's start now. I'm enlisting your help. <laughs> but again, on top of that, the pressures of finding affordable housing, unfortunately, uh, go across the city and it really is a product of our success. Again, because we're an attractive place to live or, or to move to, it's put a strain on the affordability of housing. Uh, that's why we have grow our housing effort. We've already had some success. Uh, we've allowed it to be easier to, to, to build and, and maintain accessory dwelling units. We know that that's a piece of it. But we're gonna turn over every stone to make sure that we do everything we can to bring affordability to the city of Boise. We believe that part of it is a housing trust fund where the city buys land and we dedicate that land to affordable housing. We think that financial incentives are a piece uh, of this dynamic. In a couple of weeks, I'm gonna convene the financial industry in Boise, the banking and finances, Many of you are here today. We're gonna convene and get together. How do we leverage all our resources to do better? Can't we find creative tools to finance more affordable housing, whether it's rentals or owned units? I believe that we can. The solution is here in our community and we won't stop until uh, we do that. And I wanna give a shout out to council member, uh, Lisa Sanchez, who, who uh, uh, is addressing, helped us address another piece of this, and that's unfair practices in how you apply for rental housing. Every little bit of this makes a difference. We're gonna do everything we can to make sure there's affordability. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, the characteristic that's been so import important to Boise is kindness. It's something near and dear to me and to all of us. It's what's really set us apart I can't tell you how many times, I lost count of how many times people that are uh, come to Boise in the last couple of years or just visiting and they say, gosh, there's just something about this place. People are welcoming and kind and you just don't see that every other place. In fact, you might have seen uh, somebody that came to town whose name you're gonna likely recognize uh, he came uh, about a month ago, and his name is Garth Brooks. 
Uh, and he had something to say about uh, Boise's kindness. I'm going to paraphrase a little. Part of the quote is up here. You know, he said, why this place is so popular? It's because of the way we treat each other. Uh, you, you don't see that everywhere. It's the culture that we have in Boise. He says, back home, you'd greet someone and maybe they'll just keep on walking. But here in Boise, somebody says, hey, how you doing? And that is really neat. <laughs> you know, Garth, it is really neat. Uh, and uh, our new president, Marlene Trump, uh, it seems she came to Boise and was thinking about whether to accept the job or not, and she saw a bumper sticker that said, keep Boise kind, and it was one of the things that helped her make her decision to come here. This is how we attract the right kind of people to Boise. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's why last year at this speech, we launched Boise kind. I've never had anything that the city's working on generate more enthusiasm than this. People have come up to me uh, how can I help? What can I do? How can I get involved? Uh, but it's best seen uh, in this video, so have a look. The way people treat each other here is not going on everywhere. They let you into traffic and then you, you share a wave. They, they say hello to you. They look out for their neighbors. The community here as a whole is just nothing but awesome people that are willing to help each other. When I first said that I was coming here. Just a lot of people reached out to me and said, oh, Jalen, if you need a meal or something, we're here for you. If you need a church home, I mean, it was just like an open arms. I mean, I've never felt like that anywhere else. When I think about Boise kindness, I think about how we treat everyone, and I mean everyone with kindness. So how we treat people matters, and being kind costs us nothing, but it can have such a meaningful impact on someone. So I see it really as a core value for the city of Boise. I just get a little overwhelmed just seeing so many people. Give it up for Boise Kind. Thank you all for coming. We're out here pulling goat heads, which is a noxious vine. Cut it off and remove it and stick it in your bag. I just love helping people. I'm having fun because I get to meet new people and help others. Boise Kind is just a demonstration of what a great community we live in. It's a demonstration of our community really wanting to make sure that everyone here feels like they're at home. When you see the outpouring of volunteers who come, and they come together in that spirit of kindness, which is essentially what represents exactly who the people of Boise are. What's important though is that we not just launch one time, we really have substance and we keep at it and we really make sure people understand this is something we want to do all throughout the year for years to come. <laughs> you know, we've got some real momentum and now our focus is going to be to bring real expertise to town uh, and talk about and how do we counter uh, the loneliness, the detachment that too many people feel in our communities now. We're so engaged virtually, but unfortunately that seems to have the effect to, to make us less engaged communally. Uh, and people are ready to dig in. I had a woman just last week, uh, a group from a, a senior development in town came to visit about a host of issues. But she said, what can we do to help Boise Kind? And I said, well, maybe we could bring other seniors to you or take you to other seniors that maybe aren't as engaged and her face just lit up. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody needs a circle that they can depend on when they're in trouble. But on top of that, when we help other people, that helps us. That's the essence of Boise Kind. We're, we've got real momentum and we're gonna move this forward. You know, on occasion, people come up to me and ask me, why, you know, Dave, why do you still want to be the mayor? Uh, and the answer is very, very easy. It's because uh, it's the greatest job and the biggest honor that I could think of to be the mayor of my hometown. But beyond that, I feel indebted to and urged on by the example of those that came before me, before us, so many people 
uh, were instrumental uh, in my growing up here, but, but none more important than my mom. You know, she was born and raised in Boise. She lived a Boise life. And it wasn't just because she said, uh, I don't want to live anywhere where I couldn't see the Boise River because that wasn't actually true. Uh, but what was true is she set the highest standards. When I think of my mom, I think of Boise. When I think of Boise, I think of my mom. Isn't that the way you are with the great people in your life? The people that have meant so much to you, they probably... Uh, take you back to some place, even if it isn't this place. Isn't that the best of Boise? Isn't that the best of all of us? She gave us all a sense that a life well lived, lived is lived for other people. That's the best of us. That's what it means to be a Boisean. Uh, she epitomized that more, but you know, her example says to me, there's more to do. We've got to stay with this. So you know, on the 50th anniversary of the Green Belt, can't we channel... That community effort, that unbelievable community effort to new goals, and one of those goals, shouldn't that be to give a home to every family in Boise? Shouldn't that be to do all we, count to, all we can to counter climate change so that we leave it better off for the next generation? Shouldn't that also be, be undermined, under, be rooted in kindness? Shouldn't that instruct everything that we do? You know, we live in contentious times, ladies and gentlemen. Some of the toughest, meanest times that I've seen nationally. Uh, but you know, Boise has always been able to come together and overcome the differences that we have in our community. You know, don't we all feel better when we're part of something bigger than ourselves? Isn't this really some place that isn't like every other place, and you know, if we have success, my Rotarian friend, we're gonna have more situations like that. Well, people will choose Boise over heaven, but if we do really well, you might not know the difference. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you at the Bass Block. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll see you all in just a minute. The hay is in the barn for me, so I'll be glad to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you for attending the 2019 State of the City Address. Please exit and proceed down Capitol Boulevard to the Basque Center to join us for the after-party celebration.